It is great to have you all here. The person who was leading the Bible study downstairs went over time, and since I was that person, um, I apologize for being a touch late. Great to have you here at First Presbyterian Church of Winter Haven this morning. We welcome all of you who are joining us virtually. And our apologies to those of you who have come into church in-house and did not get a bulletin. We have exceeded our bulletin count for today, which is a great celebration. We will up it by 25 next week, and we hope that you'll come join us next week, and we'll have bulletins for you. Oh, we have three. <laughs> so if you didn't get one, Richard will sell you one. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look around and see if there is somebody that we didn't have a chance to greet, and let's just wave to one another in Christ's love as we stand today. Okay, as you all are standing right there, these nice people wearing their lint and purple, I'm going to go ahead and call them out. This is Jeremy Rath's mother and father, so let's welcome them to worship today. And Jeremy is a dutiful son. He'll be buying them lunch after church since they came to town, so welcome, Rath. It's good to have you with us today. Great to have all of you with us today. I want you to peek down here at the rows. And if you're not in house with us, let me read that dedication to you. It says, the rose in the sanctuary today celebrates the birth of a daughter, Sophie Lee Summers to Porter and Sarah Summers, members of our church. March 10th, 2000, or 2021, the proud grandparents are Bob and Lisa Endress. And so we celebrate with the Summers and Endress family on that, and so that rose celebrates that. Keep your eyes out, because right in the congregation now, I think we've got three other women who are within a month of delivering babies, and so we'll be celebrating those as we go through. As we look, now I flipped my bulletin over, I'm really sorry about that. Yesterday, we had our soup kitchen ministry continue, Yesterday, we had to drop into what we call our backup plan. Um, we had a little difficulty late in the week. One of our outside groups had to cancel on us because of a family emergency of their cook. And Melissa Roker, one of our deacons, and several of our deacons got on the horn, and they had a wonderful soup kitchen yesterday. So they were able to cover that, and I want to thank all those who went that extra step to helping yesterday. We continue to feed hungry people. The deacons are signed up as a group in a couple of weeks, and on the 28th, um, a group from the church with a deacon head cook are going to cook. And then as we're looking down the line, we're starting to see some openings in late April or May. So if you'd like to help with the soup kitchen, call in and we'll put you on the board, or you can just drop downstairs when you're here in the house and help us with that. There's some of our cooks over there. The Chilton clan, they were part of the cooks yesterday. So let's thank everybody who helped yesterday to prepare a wonderful soup kitchen meal. Easter Sunday, and especially since we ran out of bulletins today, for Easter we're still going to try to maintain social distancing in the sanctuary. We have 54 locations around the sanctuary, so we can safely accommodate 200, 250 folks in-house. We'd like to know who's coming. So if you would go online and please make your reservation, just like you did Christmas Eve, We'd be glad to reserve a spot for you for Easter Sunday. 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, in-house and online. Um, last year, we were not able to hold a sunrise service, but in the community, our church is one of about a dozen churches that will be together again for the sunrise service. We're going to be at Lake Maud Park. Lake Maud Park is over near the Jewett schools and just up from Polk State College. And so that will be 6.30 in the morning for Easter sunrise service. And so if you'd like to come out and join us for that, there's a large outdoor facility there, a football field with some um, stadium seats. So it'll be very safe and we'll be social distanced there. But Easter, 6.30 there, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock right here. And we hope you'll join us for that. Lots of the activities in the life of the church are underway. Many of them are in person and many of them have a hybrid component if you want to join us online. We hope you'll be watching the calendar and come join us for worship, 
for fellowship, for service, as we're God's people together. Um, I've worn a variety of masks over the last year, and this one was chosen specifically for today, a point of personal privilege. Our son Stuart lives in Atlanta. Our daughter-in-law Anna and Stuart have been expecting a baby, and around 7 o'clock last night, our second grandchild was born. So, thank you. I had nothing to do with that, but I appreciate that. Um, his name is Emmett James, and I just got that a few minutes ago. We had a little debate last night about his name, Emmett James Negley. I have no idea how long he was or how heavy he was, because my son is not great on that kind of information, but they're all safe and happy. And so, um, when I wore this mask eight or nine months ago, and knew that I had one grandchild and was expecting another, told you a little bit about that. One of you graciously said to me as he walked out, if you have two grandchildren, does it mean you'll be twice as obnoxious with your pictures? And the answer is yes, I already have my photos. So I'll be glad to put them out. You don't have to pass them around. They'll just be on a display in the back after the service. So now it's great to have you in God's house. Oh, John is away today on spring break. So we're missing John today. Sarah is here, and again, we're so glad that Jeremy is with us. Sue McClue has a microphone there, and she is our vocalist, and it's great to see Bob with her today. So great to have you all in God's house. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God.
Good morning. Will you please join me in the call to worship this morning? As a deer longs for flowing streams, so our souls long for you, O God. Our flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. But we have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. When we meditate on you in the watches of the night, we know that you have been our help. Because, because your, your steadfast, steadfast love is better, better than life, we will, we will praise, praise your name. And let us continue in our praise as we stand and sing together the hymn, I Sing to the Mighty Power of God. Please stand. <laughs> Lord, truly penitent, yet also truly weighed down by the chains of sin. May we, in this moment of honesty and silence, ask our Lord to again come to our aid and turn us back to our Savior's side. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your grace is steadfast and constant, and you call us to you as your beloved children. You remember us even when we tend to forget you. You love us even as our love for you and others grows cold. You pursue us even when we choose to live life on our own. Forgive us for cutting ourselves off from your holy presence as it is able to give us life. Remind us of the wonderful feeling that comes as we rest in your love and mercy. Give us a longing for the home that you provide. Help us to travel more faithfully the path of discipleship, that we might more freely walk in the ways of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Help us to depend on you alone and to rest in your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
have been brightened and warmed, if just for a moment, in the light of Christ's love and strengthened again by the Holy Spirit, then set free. In Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and coming again, rejoice and give thanks. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ Church, setting the interests of others before our own, choosing to participate in the mission of Christ's love for our community and the world. Whether these offerings are financial through our virtual giving or gifts in the place as we leave this morning, or our very hearts, may we, in a spirit of generosity, give all as our Savior calls.
Holy One, your heart abounds with gifts. Receive these offerings as a sign of our trust in you and our intention to live life surrounded by your mercy, inspired by your spirit, open to the joy of your presence, hospitable to one another and generous towards your world. It is in his powerful name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This time I'd like to invite the children who are with us today to join me down front for our time with younger disciples. Yeah, we'll do the side over here. How about that? Great. Good to see you all. Some of you may have picked up a few weeks ago a peeping through Lent bag. I'll just come right over here. Just there we go. Anybody have a peeping through Lent bag? And have you been spending some time peeping through Lent? Well, what we were supposed to do this week is go in our bag and deal with a rock. And the story for this week has to do with a rock. What do you know about rocks? What do you know? They are hard. Rocks can be boring or they can be exciting. They are hard for sure. That's right. Rocks have different shapes. Some of them can cut you. This one that Reverend Sarah gave us is so smooth. It can't cut you. In fact, it's kind of neat to rub that rock. Well, rocks are pretty cool. You know about rocks. When I was reading this week in our scripture, we came across Psalm 31, and it actually says God is a rock. What would that mean? Indestructible, I like it. God is a rock. God is solid. God is strong. Indestructible. Yeah. So it talks about God being our rock and our fortress. Well, it made me think about years ago, when I was just about your age, went to a youth conference and they taught us a song that actually is a song that could have been taught to younger people or older people, but it's a song that's just stuck with me all along. And it has to do with calling God a rock. Now I'm going to sing it for you, then I'm going to put some hand motions with it, and then we're going to do a little concert, okay? It says, He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning sun. I don't care what they may say. I'm getting down on my knees and pray. And I'm going to wait, wait right here till Jesus comes. Now here's the hand motions. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley and the bright morning sun. I don't care what they may say. I'm getting down on my knees and pray. And I'm going to wait, wait right here till Jesus comes. Can you do that with me? Get ready. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning sun. I don't care what they may say. I'm getting down on my knees and pray. I'm going to wait, wait right here till Jesus comes. Now, if you Google that, you'll probably find a YouTube video, maybe with some different words, bless you, and maybe with a better singer. But I hope you'll get that in your heart because that's an important story. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. After Easter, we're going to start doing some online devotions about the names for God. And guess what? Rock, 
sword, shield are all going to be in there. So you just keep looking and listening. Now I know you already have your packets, but after we pray, I'm going to give you a rock just to think about what does it mean that God is a solid rock. Okay, let's fold our hands, bow our heads, talk to God in prayer. God, in the Bible we find that you are solid and steadfast. We find that you're indestructible. We find that you are the one who is there when everything else falls away. God, you are our rock and our fortress, and you help us to stand strong through our faith. I ask you to be with these young people as they know that truth and as we all now know how to sing that truth. Remind us as we go through Lent to continue to look to you, our rock and our Savior. Amen. Well, I've got a rock for you today. One for you, sir. For you, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a castle in it. Good. Some of the rocks are special. Thank you all for coming today, and thanks for helping me with the story. Let us continue in our worship this morning as we offer our prayers as God's people. Will you join with me in prayer this morning? Come, Lord Jesus, touch our souls with love, life-giving as light, to quiet our anger a little and gentle our desperation, to soften our fears some and soothe the knots of our cynicism. We pray you will wipe away the tears from one's eyes and ease the pain in others' bodies and souls. May we be reconciled to ourselves and then to the people around us and then nation to nation that none shall learn war anymore. May we as your people turn instead to feed the hungry, house the homeless, and care compassionately for the least of our brothers and sisters. Reshape us in your wholeness to healing people, O Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, expand in each of us by your power, life generating as the sea, to accept and use our own power to do something we truly believe in and be something more of who we are meant to be and can be. Through you, May we be inspired to dream and move, sweat and sing, fail and laugh, shout and create. And through the Holy Spirit, link our passion with courage, our hope with discipline, and love with persistence. We pray that we and those we love are enabled to learn from difficulties, grow in adversities, gain wisdom from defeat, perspective from disappointments, gracefulness from crisis, and find joy in simply living fully. And so we pray, it may, it may be so, for those whom have chosen to serve. May that be in the uniforms of emergency responders, firefighters, healthcare workers, our military, or law enforcement. We pray for safety, we pray for sound judgment, and we pray for your strength to embolden them all. Come, Lord Jesus, startle us with your presence, life sustaining as the air, to open our hearts to praise you. We pray you will open our minds to attend to your presence in those around us, whether thankfully healthy and strong, or those ill, and under stress. Life-sustaining Lord, open our spirits to worship you and open our hearts so that we may live our lives as authentically and boldly as you, Christ Jesus, lived yours. Come, Lord Jesus, be with us in the longing of this moment. Come and stay with us in our needing. Come, Lord Jesus, and go with us in our doing. Come, 
struggle with us in our searching. Come rejoice with us in our loving. Come life giver, life generator, life sustainer. And hear our prayers as we pray the prayer Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today is one of our readings from this week's year in the Bible. I'll be reading from Psalm 31. I invite you to listen now for God's word as it comes to us. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the first eight verses of Psalm 31. Listen now for God. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exult and rejoice in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy and have set my feet in a broad place. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mommy and daddy. God bless brother and sister. God bless grandparents and favorite friends and teachers, the babysitter, and the dog. Somehow, since childhood, most of us have learned to pause for prayer at bedtime. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hands, we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Bless, O Lord, this food to our use and us to your service, and keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many of us learn to pause for prayer at mealtimes. Now many of us probably pause more than once a day for prayer, and yet there are some others among us that might do well to pause more for prayer. In this year of reading through the Bible and the plan that we're following, the editor of the study guide that we're following was pretty savvy. You see, many attempts at reading through the Bible in a year fail about now. I'll have to tell you, when I've tried it in the past and I've left it up my own devices, I've taken the Bible, I've divided the number of chapters, I've taken a bookmark and I've started right there in Genesis and thought, hmm, three to four chapters a day, I can plow right through this thing in a year. Genesis is actually a good place to start because the story is the story of beginnings and it is intriguing. In fact, in Genesis, I kind of enjoy the story as it goes on and the story of Joseph at the end just rivets me. When you flip to Exodus, the story is still pretty exciting. There are plagues and drama. And the first half of Exodus, I'm usually right on track with my reading. But then in the second half of Exodus, we start building and operating a sacrificial system. It is explained in great detail in Leviticus. Then you come to a book called Numbers. <laughs> Imagine that, a book named for a census. Some very dedicated Christians who want to read all the way through the Bible in a year often run out of steam about now. But the author that we're using was smart. 
That author knew the pitfalls and said, okay, we're going to read through the Bible in a year. We're going to start in Genesis and in Matthew. We're going to read a couple chapters a day in Genesis, a chapter a day in Matthew. We're going to go down parallel paths of reading the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you know what? It's been intriguing. In fact, people that have been reading along have commented to me, and I have to agree, that even though we're just going sequentially, numerically, it's amazing how these stories from the Old and the New Testament dovetail, how they inform one another, how they almost seem like they should be read side by side. Then the person who laid out our reading plan did a brilliant thing. You see, in the midst of all this, we've got to read the 150 psalms that we find right there at the center of our Bibles. And so with all, what this editor had said in the reading plan was, every once in a while, you're going to pause a New Testament reading and add a psalm. And what we have done to this point is we've done that 31 times already. And at times, like with today's scripture lesson, that psalm is actually a prayer. Guess what? In the middle of a busy plan to read all the way through the Bible, there are built-in pauses for prayer. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. Incline your ear to me and rescue me speedily. You are indeed my rock and my fortress for your namesake. Lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. The ancient scholars that took these psalms and compiled the Bible noted that Psalm 31 is a psalm of David. In the footnotes in this Bible that we give to our high school graduates, it tells us that Psalm 31 is a prayer for deliverance from personal enemies. You know, there are times when I might want to borrow some of those words for my own conversations with God. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me and rescue me speedily. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that was hidden for me. You are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. When we feel that we are besieged, we can pause for prayer and call upon God as our rock and our fortress. That's what happens in the first part of this psalm. Now, if you've been reading along with us, you may have realized that there was a phrase in this psalm that you've already heard in the past couple of months. There in Psalm 22 and then coming up in Psalm 69, there is a line here that is common to all three psalms. One or all three of these psalms were probably on the mind of Jesus in his final days because in Luke's gospel, we are told that in his final prayer before his death, Jesus said, into your hand I commit my spirit. I imagine that as those words were passing his lips, his mind continued to the end of the verse. You have redeemed me, faithful God. When we pause for prayer, we often voice our own concerns to God, and at the same time, we affirm our faith in God. This week, I looked at a couple of the scholars who have done detailed study on Psalm 31, and one of them says, this is a model of prayer that is confident of being heard. Now, think about that. When we say something, we hope it will be heard. The scholar says, this psalm is confident of being heard, not because of the person who is speaking it, because the character of the God who hears it. You are my rock and my fortress, David says to God. 
You see, we need in our prayers to praise God and trust that God will hear us. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. From childhood we're taught that we pray to the God who listens, who redeems us, who protects us. That's the first part of this psalm. The second part of the psalm is actually the reason for praying. Listen to how David goes on. Picking up in verse 9, he says to God, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and my body also. My life is spent with sorrow, my, tear, my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many terror all around me as they scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. People pray because we have a need. A need for protection. A need for forgiveness. A need for clarity. A need for strength. Prayer helps us to approach God with our needs. And the scholars say that the way to God yields a life that overcomes our suffering. Listen to how David continues, beginning with verse 14. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let they, them go dumbfounded to Sheol. Let the lying lips be still that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord. For he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far away from your sight. But you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, pausing for prayer. Talking to God, trusting that God will listen and act, leaning on faith leads to a humble relationship, a grateful relationship with our Creator. Bless, O oh Lord, this food to our use and us to your service, and keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Pausing for prayer. As we've been encouraged to do again this week in our Bible readings, invites us to co-opt a song that does something to our souls as it passes over our lips. Listen to how David the psalmist ends this conversation with God. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's make sure this week that we pause for prayer and for praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Friends, I invite you now to stand if you're physically able. Let's join together in one of the beautiful old songs of faith, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. I can almost promise you that this will be a busy week. I don't know what's going on in your life, but it seems like every week there are challenges and opportunities and things to keep us busy. We're reading our Bibles along and we're keeping a pretty good pace, but I want us all to remember that I'm going to get down on my knees and pray. I'm going to pause and talk to God, and I'm just going to see how prayer and praise together makes each day more wonderful. Approach the heart of God this week in prayer. Pause more than once a day and see how God lifts you up and redeems you. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to ask you for just a minute to be seated and during the prelude you'll be dismissed from the back to the front. <laughs>